Iran has recently announced that it is going to continue to scale back its commitments to the JCPOA agreement. And that is the 2015 Iran nuclear deal brokered between the United States, Iran, and several other countries. Essentially, what they're saying is that the U.S. has already withdrawn illegally from the agreement, so they have certain rights and certain steps that they're allowed to take to scale back their commitments. Okay, we can do this, and if you still don't come back to the table to do what you're supposed to do, then we can do this. And Iran is acting entirely within that agreement, which they have been doing since day one, and the United States just unilaterally withdrew because Trump said it was time to do so, mainly because it was probably, probably because it was Obama that largely brokered that deal, and anything that Obama does, Trump has to undo it regardless of the fact that it edges the world closer to nuclear war, or at least war within the Middle East. And this, of course, has ramped up many, many tensions, and there's a, a great deal of uncertainty in the situation because Trump keeps saying there can be a deal one day and fire and fury the next day, showing a complete inconsistency in his policies whatsoever. And thus, as a result of this, Iran has attempted to remain within the agreement, follow the rules, and they're getting frustrated. Now, it's recently reported by the New York Times that during the UN General Assembly, both Donald Trump and the Iranian President Rouhani, Hassan Rouhani, were staying in the same hotel. And the, I believe it was the Secret Service, had set up a special telephone between Trump's room and Rouhani's room, to, or between Trump's room and a third party room. To have a discussion. And the French president, Emmanuel Macron, uh, agreed to talk to Rouhani to bring him to the phone so that they could have that conversation. And then they agreed to it, and then Rouhani just walked off on him. He went, uh, Macron went knocking on his door and said, Hey, what's up? We got a, it's time for the phone call, and Rouhani had already freaked off on him. So he just left Trump hanging in the wind. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but, I mean, is that anything compared to what the United States has done to Iran, leaving them hanging with the entire nuclear agreement? Despite all of the non-stop claims that Iran has violated the agreement, when it has been proven again and again by the International Atomic Energy Agency that there has been no violation by Iran. And, and it has been agreed upon by the European signatories to the deal that there has been no violation of the agreement. And yet Iran is still sitting there frustrated because, according to the agreement, if the United States does not live up to its obligations and places sanctions on them again, what Iran loses is supposed to be made up for by the European signatories. Now, the European signatories are not living up to those obligations. They even created uh, a kind of payment system to go around the SWIFT one, which is controlled by the United States. And, of course, they decided to do that without the ability to extend credit. Actually, credit's pretty goddamn important to the world economy. In fact, capitalism literally cannot function without credit. And that's not just on credit cards, mortgages, uh, leases or purchases of cars, etc. But very large corporations usually borrow money ahead of production, do that round of production, and the profits pay off the debt and the interest to it. But if you can't get that line of credit, well, you're kind of screwed. And a lot of this has to do with oil as well. Of course, Iran is targeted because it is an energy supplier to the world. And that frequently they have to buy things in order to do a round of production, which they cannot get domestically because no country is an island onto itself. Even the best efforts of the DPRK have not managed that. Everybody needs to extend a line of credit in order to enter into production and then pay that back afterwards. So even when the European signatories say they're going to live up to their agreement, they don't. And hopefully this brief explanation gives you an idea as to why there's so much hostility between the United States and Iran. 
right now. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.